as you have heard that technology can be boon and it can be bane also when technology can be efficiently used it is treated as a boon but when it is misused it is treated as a bane and in terms of the gps it is mostly boon because it is bringing revolution to the humanity hello everyone welcome to the in new series of drishti is i am ritu and today's topic is about gps global positioning system and how does it work so before moving to the points of discussion first of all we should know that how technology is changing our life so with the advent of machine we have seen that there are so much socio economic changes brought in the lives of the people and after that the story didn't stop and we are in the phase of industrial revolution 4 and gps is also the part of the industrial revolution 4 so it is also bringing so much significant changes what we can expect for so moving to the points of discussion part so first of all we are going to discuss the news and then we are going to discuss the gps and then we are also going to discuss that how does it function and then we are going to discuss that how satellites keep time and do other countries have such kind of navigation system then practice question for prelims and mains so moving to the news part so we already have discussed that very few technology have capacity to bring revolution and gps is one of them and it is bringing revolution what we have expected so beyond expectation it is bringing so much revolution and it is helping to the humanity so that's why we have chosen this topic but here is the twist that very few countries has its own kind of the gps so it's time to expand its services to other countries so that other countries can also get benefited from it so that's why we are going to discuss this topic so moving to the intro part that what is gps so gps full form we already know that it is a global positioning system and it was established by us defense uh, system which is in 1973 and the first satellite was launched in 1978 and what is the modern satellites we have in terms of the gps it has 24 satellites which uh, orbit around to the six uh, which orbit around the earth in a six orbits and uh, there are they completes two orbits in a single day so each orbit they are uh, we have six orbits so and each uh, orbits completes round of in uh, two orbits in a single day and there are three segments here first segment is space segment the second is control and third is the user segment so we'll discuss that what is space segment what is control and what is the user segment so comes to the uh, space segment so the space segment consists 24 satellites and the six orbits we already had discussed that it has six orbits and the six orbits what is the above height of the six orbits so they are above 20200 km above the earth and each orbit has a four satellites and here when it comes to the configuration part so whenever you see any satellites there are minimum four satellites orbiting the earth so uh, this is a brief about the space segments we have moving to the user segment so control segment so what is the control segment so it is a ground based control system and it tracks all the 24 satellites which are there in the space segment and uh, uh, it also synchronizes with the standard positioning system and standard positioning system tells you that what you can expect from the gps and uh, where is the master control station situated for this control segment so it is in the severe air force base colorado and the second is the air force base california so this is the brief about the control segment and moving to the user segment so it tells about the uses of all these segments and uh, it tells various application the first application is the construction surveying military logistic telecommunication agriculture so user segment tells about such things and uh, uh, according to 2021 data we have around 6.5 billion global navigation satellite system which is very huge in number and it is expected that it will reach by 10 billion by 2031 so it is going to serve humanity in a different way and technologically it will drove all the societies of the world so these are the three segments we have for the gps moving to the another side that how does gps work so there is a continuous broadcasting system in the gps and that uh, broadcasting signal uh, system gives the signal and with that signal we perform various task so these are the uh, things we have and that signal tells you about the location orbit operational status which are the part of any gps system 
and uh, how it is transmitted so it transmitted through l1 which is the and also the l2 and what is the frequency of the transmission so we have 50 bits per second and uh, what happened that you know in a single channel it can be transmitted to the multiple signals and it gives multiple signals from a same channel so this is the process it works and it generate electromagnetic waves and through we can access different kind of information about the location so in this way the D, uh, gps works and we have a two kinds of encoding system the first encoding system is the coarse and acquisition mode and the second is the precise and the course and acquisition mode is used by the civilian and precise mode is used by the military. So, this thing is also very much important because maybe in prelims examination they can ask the classification about the GPS system. Moving to the another slide, the another slide belongs to that how do satellites keep time. So, here we have to be very careful for the time because it operates from the satellites and there is a difference between satellite timing and the ground timing. So, if you will have a a difference of 38 microseconds then on ground it will become 10 kilometer within a single day so this number and this gap is huge so they have to be very careful for the uh, timing and how these things keep this uh, timings on a satellite keep the timings on a time so we have a uh, this atomic clock and who has established this atomic clock so the us has established this atomic clocks in 1974 and its name was star nts1 satellites so, what it does that it helps to reduce the time gap between satellites and on the ground and right now we have the difference of 10 nanoseconds. So, it tries to minimize the gap between times on the satellites and on the ground. So, uh, by this way we can uh, check on the timings and uh, here uh, atomic clocks uh, generates different kind of the electrons and each electrons have a same number of uh, specific amount and they and generate same uh, number of energy. So, there is no difference between the transmitting of the energy and what that energy stimulates. So, it is stimulates that what is the correct timing of and what is the correct gap of the timing between satellite on or on the ground. So, that is why all these electrons generate same amount of the energy. So, in this way, the atomic clocks help us to minimize the gap between the different time period and whatever we got the time period there is a difference but there is a very minimalistic difference so it tells accurately time what we have so uh, moving to the next slide next slide is about do other countries have gnss it is global navigation satellite system so very few countries have gnss and among them are australia china european union india also Japan, South Korea, Russia and the UK. So, what we have seen that you know we are a vast country and many of the developed countries are not able to develop these kind of the navigation system. So, it is high time that every country should have their own kind of navigation system because their geography are different, their location systems are different. They have a different approach to look for the timings, they have a different approach for different kind of correlation. So, it is high time that uh, all the scientific committees should unite together and they should help other countries. Here we can see that there is absence of African countries. Most of the countries are the European countries or the Western countries. And Asian in Asian countries also we have this China, Korea and India. So, we have seen that Asian countries are also absent here. So, all the scientific committees should come and unite together and they had to help other countries to develop their own navigation system. And India has their own kind of navigation system, we will discuss in further slide. So, we will discuss about the NAVIC. So, what it uh, NAVIC is? So, it is a Indian regional navigation satellite system which was earlier established in 2006 and it is right now known as a NAVIC which is uh, navigation with Indian constellation and its space segment consists of, uh, so we have uh, discussed that we have a different kind of segment. So, in space segment, we are talking about the space segment. It consists of three geostationary orbit and four geosynchronous orbits. And as of May 2023, the minimum number of satellites, four could be facilitated from the ground-based navigation system. So, at least four could be visible from the ground-based navigation system. And what is the master control facilities we have? So, earlier we have discussed that it was in Colorado. In terms of India, it was in first in Karnataka, which is Hassan in Karnataka and second in Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh. So, this thing is also very much important. You must know about it. 
Coming to the other features of the Navic, so what other features we have? So it uses rubidium atomic clock. So we already had discussed that who had first established the atomic clocks and how atomic clocks help us to generate the accurate timings. So it uses the rubidium atomic clocks. This fact is very much important for your prelims examination. And uh, here it comes to the L5 and the S. And uh, here we have this L1 band also and it uses different kind of application and it is widely used in fisheries, military and other international borders. So in that way Navic is helping us not just to locate the navigation on the ground, it is also helping us to navigate all forms and not just to the military services but to the other agriculture tourism sector. So this is the brief about Navic we have. Moving to the next slide which is the prelims question and this question is related to the Gagan because we had not discussed about Gagan. So you have to find out the facts about the Gagan and your first statement is it is developed by the Indian Space Research Organization. And the second is it aims at providing correction and integrity message for GPS. So you must know that what its functions and it has been developed by for aviation. So we already have discussed that you know GPS system is not just used for the aviation. So in this terms you have to found that the Gagan is related to which sector and here they are asking the correct statement. So you have to answer in the comment section. Moving to the mains question. The mains question is what is global positioning system? It said that apart from navigation, most modern technology depend on it examine. So we already had discussed the brief intro about the GPS that who has first established it and what is the GPS of India, how India is developing into this sector. So you have to give that when uh, it is has been developed, who has developed it and what are the three segments we have in terms of the GPS. So you can uh, draw like this space, user. So here you can make chart like this and then coming to that apart from navigation what else we could expect from the GPS. So it can be used in a variety of areas such as tourism, it is widely used in tourism, then agriculture, telecommunication, military, aviation, natural disasters. So, GPS is not just limited to the navigation, it is used in a variety of area and it is your job that you have to elaborate on such points and you have to conclude also that how we can help other countries to develop their own navigation system and how India has developed their own navigation system and it is showing and it is proving as a very fruitful for the India's scientific development and it is not just related to the scientific development it is also related to and it is also serving the humanity and it is also doing the social services and it preventing so many lives in terms of natural disaster because it is giving the early warning. So in that way you can conclude that it is not just related to the science and scientific temperament it is also serving the humanity and the social issues. So this can be your conclusion. I hope you like this lecture. If you have any questions to this lecture, kindly ask in the comment section. Thank you.